If you are starting a record collection, most likely you already look for a couple of videos online, YouTube, whatever, or even blogs or something like that, asking for tips. And you probably come across to a lot of people giving you either the same advice or something similar. And to be honest, I'm kind of tired of it. So I decided to pull up this video while we are waiting for releases. I think it's been a long, long time. But anyway, I would like to give you some tips in order to make your collection, let's say, or the initial jump to your collection a little bit easier. These are some advices that I wish somebody would have given to me, but I started to collect vinyl in a very, very, very weird way. Uh, I'll talk about it in another video if this gets relevant. So the first advice I have today is to prioritize your hobbies. I know that this is not related to buying per se, but if you spend money on other things, you will have less money to spend on records. And this goes for video games, musical instruments, uh, photography, whatever. Like uh, you really need to decide in what am I going to spend my money, my spare money this month. Second advice, again, not really buying, but it's par it's part of the process. How did you start to collect vinyl? Most of the time we start having old vinyls laying around at home. I know that these are not particularly our style or something like that, but sometimes they have really, really interesting things. Try to ask your parents, your grandparents, your uncles, you know, like go through all that part of the family that they think that, you know, like, a, like, analogic music it's outdated and they don't see any value on it i'm pretty sure that you are not going to rip off anyone uh, by getting a vinyl that uh, it's, the value is the value of a car or something like that so it should be fine uh, most of the time they will give them to you for free i got about 50 uh, seven inch vinyls uh, from my grandparents they were apparently part of a jukebox it significantly helped me increase my uh, collection so really good advice advice number three it has to be with where do you buy your records so i'm pretty sure that most of you you buy your records on music stores uh discogs etc etc there is a lot of other places that you can buy records uh, you can buy records on uh, bookstores you can buy records on clothing stores i think there was um, not sure exactly what record it was i think it was like That's where I realized that actually you can buy records on clothing stores. So they often have discounts and those discounts, they, you know, like they affect everything unless it says uh, discount only valid for buying pink socks or something like that. Um, in my case, for instance, as a part of a benefit of the, of the company I'm working for, we were getting some, let's say, some vouchers that you could use in, in, in shops. One of these shops was a bookstore and every month I was getting around 20 euros uh, of, of this. So, you know, like a, it's a really good uh, place to, uh, to buy. Uh, yeah. But seriously, my favorite place to buy new records are hypermarkets or like really huge shops. I really don't want to name them. You probably know what I'm talking about. But these shops, they they have something very, very interesting. And it's one of my favorite two-word combination in the world. It's called stock clearance. So what does this mean? This means that the shop will put an item super cheap, really, really, really cheap, just because they need to get rid of them. Because they need to, you know, like make room for new stock coming in. And, and I will try to make this another video, I got this record here, it's actually from a Spanish band, it's, uh, it's called Stopa, they are, uh, uh, they make rumba, they are quite interesting, and it's a gatefold record, in which basically you, you have there like the lyrics, instead of having it in an insert, you have the lyrics in here, and uh, you have some graphics but basically like it shows like it's uh, some sort of a movie something very interesting is that this album was released in 2015 and it has in sort of like comic book like it has here an advertisement for their 
uh, next album, which is still not released uh, up to today. Uh, on top of that, it came with a CD, which is somewhere around here. Don't want to... There we go. And you also have it on CD if you want to put it in your car. So it's quite neat if you ask me. So this album, I paid for it about eight euros, if not mistaken. I think it was eight. I mean, it was dirt cheap. I mean, when I saw it, I was like, "What? The f I need to. I need to really. Uh, I need to really buy it." And uh, right now, if we go to Discogs, and uh, you can see what the f okay, uh, <laughs> this is very nice. Uh, there's only one for sale right now on the second market on Discogs, and it's 49.95 euros. So, I mean, huge margin as you can see. So, time to time, again, you are not gonna buy a, you know, like a, like a first edition, first pressing of the white album of the Beatles for two euros, you know, or something like that. But of course, you're gonna find uh, other interesting stuff. So, it's always a really good place to uh, get records. There are other places that you can buy records that are not like typical music stores, antique stores, uh, flea markets, you know, like uh, they are basically bringing, uh, bringing records in there. They don't really know the value that they have. Again, you are not going to strike luck and get something super expensive for dirt cheap. Most of the records that they have, uh, the downside of not knowing how much they, uh, they cost is that they don't know how to handle them. So they probably have them stacked, you know, like uh, horizontally instead of vertically. Uh, you need to be very careful when buying those uh, those vinyls. Again, if you are not looking for a particular edition, then, you know, like uh, can get it, uh, can get it quite for a good price. My advice number four has to be uh, bargaining. Then you need to be very careful. You cannot really go uh, on the style of pound stars or, or something like that. I mean, you really cannot, let, let's say, insult the, the, the people. And of course, you will never bargain on a music store or, a, you know, like a, where they sell like a new items. But, you know, like it's, it's a really good way of getting down a few bucks that you can reinvest in other, vinyl, in other vinyls. And for instance, like a, I like to do it in concerts, but I don't do it when I'm going to buy one record of the band. So if I go and I like the band and I'm, and I'm like, okay, I really like this band, I'm looking to see them for a long time, uh, I'm gonna get all the records that they have because I'm not sure when is the next time they're gonna come to my, uh, to my city. And most likely the shipping costs are quite expensive. So what I will do is if they have four records, I will go to the merch guy and I will ask him, do I get any deal if I buy all of them? I tried this three times and the three times I got something uh, for free. The first time I got a patch for free, which is like 15 euros. I mean, it's a save, overpriced patch anyway, but you know. Uh, the second time the guy made me a 20% discount, which was fantastic. And actually it let me enough money to buy a vinyl from another band that I liked. And the um, third time the guy made me a discount and uh, when I paid only with coins, uh, he made me another discount because, uh, because yeah, like uh, they really appreciate on the, on the merch booths that, uh, that you can pay with, uh, with coins so they have change and so on. So, you know, like uh, the same with uh, used uh, records on stores. You go there, bear in mind that they are buying and then they need to have a margin of benefit. So, you know, like if you see a record for five euros, uh, don't go and say like, hey, can you make it two or something like that. You need to bargain, but bear in mind that you need to respect also the businessman on the other hand that invested money and something and, and, and so on and so on. So I'll recommend you to go there, uh, grab five, six, seven records and uh, ask the, or, or directly ask the guy like, hey, do you have any uh, sale or additional sale if I buy a lot. They might tell you yes, they might tell you no, they might tell you it depends, uh, but you know, like uh, you're asking in advance, so it's not really that unpolite and it's, uh, it's a good solution. My preferred shop is the one that I go on my hometown, it, back in Spain, um, and they, they 
do round down the price. I mean, it doesn't save that much, but it's something quite nice that they do. And the, all the records, they include one of these, which is quite nice as well. Most of the places, they don't do it. And advice number five, subscribe to this channel. I know, I know, I know it's a big move, but uh, I'm planning to do giveaways uh, time to time when I visit record stores and something like that. Let's see how it goes. I'm thinking about doing a giveaway right now among people who, who can potentially comment this video, but only if I reach a certain number of subscribers before the next video. So let's see if it happens. So yeah, did you have any interesting found? Do you have any way to get uh, vinyls cheaper? Let me know. Maybe we can do a second part of this video and uh, we can all have fun. So yeah, I've been Hef, thank you for watching, see you next time.